All right, so today we're not going to talk about this position because you get that in the class, but we'll talk about some stuff associated with it. Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm Chris, and this is Regular Guy Training. So here's what we got today, boys. Um, we hear a lot of different talk about, uh, like, parallax and optics and that kind of shit. A lot of you guys may or may not have noticed that when you go onto like Optics Planet or wherever the fuck you want to get your optics and that kind of thing, you end up looking at like your red dots and a little column that says parallax and it says that it's parallax free. Uh, it's bullshit because it's a lens, the fucking illuminator in the center, and a fucking lens. There's no such thing as parallax free optics. And today we're actually going to show that off a little bit. Uh, not only are we going to show it off a little bit, we're also going to show you how to help yourself as far as dealing with it. Now, in short, I, I could get into a real detailed explanation on this, but I'm just going to stick to how it affects you individually. In short, the less centered that your dot is, the le the um, I guess I could say the less accurate, quote unquote, the shot could be. Because if you zeroed your optic where the dot is in the center of the glass and it's nice and perfect, you got it, you got it impacting exactly where you want it, and then when you line up behind a rifle like in a pinch or you're moving fast or whatever and that dot is slid somewhere else than perfectly centered in the glass the more affected that individual shot is now um, some optics are better at this than others some optics are worse like for instance the aimpoint t1 by now has developed kind of a little reputation to where if the if the dot is slid to the extreme left right up or down it's a significant shift whereas like your EOTechs, your aimpoint comp m4s your M your uh, mros and your aimpoint t2s um and apparently the aimpoint comp m5 but i don't have data on that so we'll get there when we get there um apparently those have really really good parallax in that it could be slid real far to left right up or down like the dot in the glass right to where Instead of the dot being centered in the glass, it's way the fuck over here on the left someplace. It's that shift is less than other optics. Like primary arms used to be really fucking bad at this at one point. The Aimpoint T1's kind of got a, a reputation uh, for having, uh, depending on certain circumstances, kind of shitty parallax, uh, which is why the T2 exists. Uh, and like Hollow Suns do that kind of shit too, right? Now over time, optics companies have started to improve. Their parallax shift and their red dots and that kind of shit. Like, like EOTech's always been awesome at this. For instance, the Aimpoint Comp M4. One of the reasons why it replaced the M2 was that its it, its uh, improvements over it as far as parallax shift were enormous, comparatively speaking. So, what I have here is a T1 on my little Draco here, and what I'm gonna and what I'm gonna show is. Um, what the shot string looks like with the dot slid over to the extreme left hand side of the glass and I'm, I'm going to be the rifle is going to be monopoded on the ground standing straight up and that kind of shit I'm going to get centered and then I'm going to slide my head over uh, as far to the left as possible then I'm going to take a couple of rounds on that fairly used target over there which is in frame yes okay cool it's in frame uh, so you should be able to see the target that I have down there that's got a bunch of tape and bullshit on it uh, and we're going to be at about 50 yards. You'll be able to see the difference um, between having a dot centered up and having, and having a dot slid all the way over to one side. And then we're going to go in depth with a couple other things that can turn this disadvantage into an advantage depending on the circumstances you find yourself in. So let's go ahead and get there. All right, so what we have here is we got ourselves a 12.2 inch freaking uh, 30 caliber AK, obviously. And what we're going to end up doing here is I got my bag set so my ele so my elevation on the little monopod is good so I'm not like having to get really deep into it and stuffing this underneath my fucking collarbone because fuck you, I'm puss padding today. And all we're going to do right now is I'm good and centered on what it is that I intend to shoot, right? And all I'm going to do now is just slide my head to the far left hand side. So that dot is still on that target, but it is at the very left edge of the glass, like I can barely see it. So we're going to fire a shot group into that, and I'm going to make this as good as I can possibly get it. So. Okay. 
entered. And all the way to left. Sort of imperfect. I don't have myself on a fucking bench here, but we're gonna take ourselves down to the target area and see what's what. Okay, so during the actual shooting portion of this, I, it, the dot was more in the lower left-hand uh, corner of that glass, right? I was just trying to keep things more or less together, and one, obviously, I let center up a little more than I should have, but you see four on the low right-hand corner there of that of that rather huge target for 50 yards. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to talk about some other stuff. Alright, so as you can tell, if it's if it slid over to the far left-hand side at 50 yards, it's off to the right versus to the left. And it's what a lot of people would figure is the case. That if you scoot the dot further to the left-hand side, it'll push it to the left. Uh, no, that's really it. How it works in the glass is very similar to what happens with your front sight posts. If you're trying to adjust your point of impact to the right, Okay, you have to move the front sight post to the left. So it's very similar in where that thing is going to end up, depending on where it is in the glass. Which is why if you if you have a real a real solid shot group, everything felt good, and you had that one flyer that was in there, one of those things you want to question is how centered was that dot? Because sometimes people develop natural cants, sometimes people have natural cants in their own necks, and they'll push themselves to the left or right hand side or whatever the fuck on their optic. Now, here's another thing that we're going to go into. Where your, optic is, where your optic is set on the rifle and where it is relative to the world could change your point of impact as well. What we're going to do here is the gun will be rolled completely on its side. Um, all I'm going to do is center the, gla the, the dot in the glass and I'm going to go ahead and press a few rounds off at the center of the heart box on a target that I've got over there. So it'll lay just like so. Got ourselves a nice and centered dot. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and press a couple of rounds. I shouldn't have pressed that shot with a too bright dot. Alright, centered. Centered. kind of pitch that last one but let's go see what's what all right so from the first shot group we had one two three four five right and on the second shot group I had one that I fired that the dot was entirely too bright so I made up for it and here we go again one two three four five and then a sixth one you'll notice how it's pushed off to the left hand side the reason for this is that when the gun gets rolled over to the left, so does its hold. So does its height over bore. So does its friggin. So does friggin all of that other shit that's associated with it, because the optic is zeroed in vertical land. Now, when the gun's rolled over to the side, you'll notice that 
it's pushed it itself is pushed over to that to that left okay and you'll start to see especially those of you who've been taught by me before you'll start to see where this is starting to lead into as far as well what do we do now okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and fire the shot group and then we'll see what happens to the shot group afterwards Go look. All right, so as you can see, we have some new holes in here. Right. Now, here's the thing. We have one, two, three that are new, a fourth one in here, and five. Right? Here's the thing with this, right? Why is it centered now? Where did I hold that dot while it was in the center? Well, when the rifle itself was rolled over on its left-hand side, what I showed you guys before when the rifle was standing straight up was when I push that dot all the way to the left-hand side, it's very similar to pushing your front sight post to the left-hand side. It would push the shock route to the right. Does that make sense? When the gun's rolled over on its side because it's zeroed in up and down land, because that fucker's rolled over on its side and because you're dealing with your own... Um, uh, fuck. With your own... Uh, bore axis issues and that kind of thing, what happens is that when the gun gets rolled over, so does everything else. Okay, You'll notice that with your ARs that have higher uh, height over bore type stuff, that even at 50 yards, that is much more noticeable. So while rolled over on that side and in real deep cover, as you could probably obviously see, and there's more that we talk about as far as that position is concerned in the classes that we have to deal with, especially the Rifle II classes, um, we will we'll end up using that position as a what if type position, right? But you'll notice that that was all pushed over to the left hand side. So now how did we get it centered? Well, as far as the glass is concerned, when the gun was rolled over on this hand side, you still have that toilet paper roll that's there. But because I know that if I just leave the dot centered and have the gun rolled over on this left hand side, I'll impact to the left. So what did I do? I took the dot and I pushed it to the extreme left of the glass and now we're centered up, okay? The shots are a little bit higher, entirely my fault. It's the shading thing, really. My eyes got more attracted to more shit that was up here. But if I had just centered it like I should have in the center of the friggin' heart, it would have impacted in the center of the heart for, versus having a, a higher than center um, bias, right? But again, what I could see and what I was shooting at, for the most part, it centered itself back up and the shot group was more or less where it needed to be, provided that you do your, your job as far as trigger control and blah, 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 blah. Uh, which I didn't do a great job of, as you can probably see, because that Draco's trigger is kind of shit. Uh, it's just being frank here. I'm, I'm not quite used to the creepy to creepy to creep on that trigger yet. But the point is, is that you can see it. Okay, if it's rolled over, on, if, it's, uh, if it's to the extreme left while standing straight up and down, the shock group gets pushed to the right. If the gun is rolled over on its left-hand side, the shock group pushes itself to the left, right? So we have the right, we have the left, and if it's rolled over all the way on that side, and we're getting into a deep position that, that gives us as little exposure as possible, but we still want our shit to be centered up, which, by the way, this is like it was at like 64 yards that we shot this from, a really random distance right? If we push that over to the extreme left-hand side of the glass while the gun is rolled over on its left-hand side, we can get that straightened up. So 
This is one of those little how do we make parallax work with us uh, kind of things. But this is one of those things that you have got to dope yourself. All right, so realistically speaking, and explained as simply as possible, okay, when you're zeroing a rifle, okay, and you're in vertical land, relative to that gun's height over bore, it has its up and down, okay. When you roll the gun over to one side, it now has a brand new up and down, fucking Ender's Game, okay. My camera dude literally just made that reference and it's perfect. But the point is, though, is that once it has this new up and down, relative to a height over bore that the rifle was previously zeroed on, you're gonna have a dope shift because you, you rolled it over to the left hand side. Now, my lefties, this is a reason for you to shoot right handed a little bit because if you try flipping that gun over on its right hand side, you get to do that one time. I, I get it, man, sucks to suck. But, point is though, is that it's just a little, it's just a little, a little fucking tool, little tool in the box you know, that works and that you can use to let and that you can use to leverage for your own devices and that kind of shit. Now, earlier in the video I had already mentioned that some optics are better at keeping their parallax closer to like what what it would be in the center of the glass and some optics are worse. Depending on how you slice this here, it could be a good or a bad thing depending on um, your view of of, uh, of the whole situation once you start going out and doping it yourself but I suspect that a lot of guys are going to start turning guns sideways on ranges and shit and pissing off range safeties. It is what it is. But it's just another tool in, in the toolbox. It's a, one additional little snippet of data that you can take away from and it's yet another thing that's going to help you. So it is what it is. Now for my guys that want to come out and learn this kind of stuff that saw it and it was like, I want to learn how to do that, but all of that explanation went right the fuck over my head. I get it. We have classes that we're getting ready to do all, all across the goddamn country. The next Rifle 1 and 2 class that we'll be doing is in uh, Louisiana. Following that, uh, we'll be going to Tulsa. And I'll be certainly scheduling other shit throughout the year. Uh, and for my guys that are just kind of like, rifles are gay, I, I sort of understand you because pistols suck at everything except concealment. But we do tons of pistol classes and that kind of stuff too. We're actually getting ready to head out to um, to Drakesboro, Kentucky, and do a pistol one and two class this coming weekend. And then we have Brush Creek the following month and other classes following that. So we're constantly traveling. We're constantly running running around and doing what it is that we have to do. As an O, oh, by the way, if you host me or do the legwork to host me, you train for free. So you know, uh, my contact information is on the goddamn website. You can find it there. Uh, for those of you that want to train for a little bit, uh, for a little bit less, depending on how you really math this, because for some of my guys that are on the $35 a month program, it's not necessarily cheaper, but you're paying me less money. You're just spending more money on the ammo and that kind of shit. If you sign up for $35 a month through the Patreon program, link for link for that shit is in the, is in the description below. You can come out and get your ass whooped with us as much as possible. Uh, we have a lot of guys that are on like 10, 12, a couple of them with 14 classes on them now, so. Um, we, we believe in developing people versus trying to wring out every dollar we can from them, so that's us. Um, also, that Patreon money goes towards training up soldiers for nothing. I got a couple of guys that are going to be in Louisiana, probably one in Tulsa and that kind of shit too. And a couple of them that wear bad belts for a living, so we'll probably have a couple of guys in the coming, uh, pistol classes as well. So if you want to contribute to that, uh, or just say, fuck it, I want to help me, there's a way for that to be exchanged on either side of the house. And remember, if you want a hat from us, link for that is in the description below also. Because if I have to shill, it'll be for me and nobody else. But that's all I got today, guys. Remember, regular guys' firearm is the last defense against tyranny. Be easy.